Principality of Rejection, Part 6. In these scenarios of rejection in children, spirits of fear, rejection, and abandonment come into the children even while they are in womb. No matter the scenario, there is an answer and a cure for rejection. In children, we teach the parents to repent for however they rejected their child, then ask the child for forgiveness, bless the child with a mother's and or a father's blessing, and command the spirits of fear, rejection, and abandonment to leave. God accepts all of us, and when we realize our true identity is in Him, rejection no longer has a chance with you. If you were rejected by your parents in some way, choose to forgive them for their sin and release the bitterness. Who am I in God? The Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Hebrews 4 verse 12 God's Word answers all questions, including how to deal with rejection, but in so doing it can cut deeply into our presumptions, convicting us in the deepest recesses of our heart. Isaiah 54 provides God's definitive word on rejection. Isaiah 54 1 says, Sing, O barren, thou that didst not hear. Break forth into singing, and cry aloud, thou that didst not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. Sing, O barren, thou 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 that didst not hear, the inability to have a child. Barrenness is a major contributor to rejection. The barren woman feels rejected by God and by her husband. In many large families she feels rejected by them as well, even by the commun community. Self-rejection, self-hatred, and guilt well up in her spirit. Paradoxically, Rejection, fear of rejection, and self-hatred can produce barrenness. Many miscarriages result from an autoimmune dysfunction where white corpuscles attack the umbilical cord. This produces swelling and edema, resulting in a strangulation of the cord, preventing blood, oxygen, and nutrients from getting to the placenta. The baby dies and the woman miscarries. Anxiety and fear can cause frigidity and impotence. Obviously, without sexual contact, barrenness results. Self-rejection and rejection can also produce barrenness because they affect the endocrine system. This system responds to emotions. The ovaries and testae are part of the endocrine system. They can malfunction from anxiety, stress, and fear. Again, then this occurs. Uh, when, again, when this occurs, barrenness results. Tied to being barren are the related female problems of PMS and menopause. We find these issues if a woman dislikes being a woman for any reason. Sometimes they resent how God made their bodies because they started to develop at a young age, do not like the monthly cycle. If there was molestation or rape, they reason, if I were not a girl, this would not have happened. If Dad wanted a boy, she might resent herself. These situations result in resenting being a female and thus producing the physical problems. Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear, bring forth into singing. When we receive deliverance from rejection, we can become filled with joy. We can feel safe, secure, wanted, accepted, and needed, rather than brooding. We feel like singing and dancing. We have a freedom of spirit. Rejection scars the human spirit and steals our joy. 
It keeps us from having a merry heart. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. <clears throat> Proverbs 17, verse 22. And when we don't have a merry heart, our whole body is affected. If God was accepted as... Uh, if God has accepted us just as we are, then we can totally or truly understand that nothing else matters. Rejection itself is rejected, leaving us free to gain a merry heart. Isaiah 54 continues, Break forth into singing and cry aloud, Thou that didst not travail with child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. The devil cheats God of his children because of the curse of sin. God says that more people on the earth have chosen against him than for him. Enlarge the place of thy tent, verse 3, and let them stretch forth the curtains of thy inhabitations. Spare not, lengthen thy cords, and strengthen thy stakes, for thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. What does this mean? Rejection causes us to run and hide from others, staying isolated. Instead, we should walk out of our self-imposed prison, set free from condemnatory self-introspection. Let's break free of our feelings of self-hatred. To do this, we need to swing the doors open and enlarge our place. We need to enlarge our tent. With rejection banished, we will interact fe freely with other people. Without fear, we can be vulnerable without feeling threatened of exposure. We can entertain people in our homes. We can have fellowship with others. Verse 4 says, Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame, for thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth, and shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood any more. This verse says, Fear not, fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed. Shame accompanies rejection. The unloving spirit of shame robs us of our peace and destroys any chance we have to build relationships. As we feel shame, we avoid looking anybody in the eye, hang our head, and feel great ap apprehension. Our self-talk says, I'm guilty, I'm rejected, don't look at me. Why? Because rejection produces shame. How wonderful it is to be set free from shame. Neither be thou confounded. This means not to be confused. Rejection produces double-mindedness and it walks with confusion. We want to accept love and yet we can't receive it. We want to feel I'm the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. Philippians 3 verse 9 But the devil says, you old worm, you know you're no better than a filthy rat. We find ourselves agreeing with the devil. This is the attack of a spirit of confusion, seeking to make us double-minded. James 1 verse 8 says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And I'll be right back with part 7.